Scientific research shows that the Pacific is the region most affected in the entire world by climate change. In the case of Kiribati, one of the biggest threats is a sea level rise. And that's because Kiribati, which is composed of 33 low-lying atolls, is no more than four meters high at the highest point. And in Kiribati, we can say that 100% of the population lives within one kilometer of the coast. So the country is extremely vulnerable. Given that the scientific research shows that by 2100, it's almost certain now that we'll have more than a meter of sea level rise. On a flat island like Kiribati, that amount of sea level rise comes very far inland. So it's, it's a very serious situation. And for that reason, the government is looking at options for relocating the population. <laughs> I came here in 2002. Uh, this place now has been completely changed. Now, as you can you can see, it's like a swamp, right? How many more years time, and then it will be completely uh, nobody live in this village. We've seen the scenarios, the projections put forward by the scientific community. I am not being pessimistic, I'm being very realistic. And I think as a leader, it's important that um, we provide options. Even if there is that 1% possibility that it will happen, we must provide the options for our people. One thing that I want, and I've always emphasized is that we, we, we never wish to be refugees. And we would be refugees if we don't do anything now, because a refugee is a, a response to an, an unexpected event, okay? But we know it's coming, so we should be acting accordingly, beginning from now. And then we would have our people, if they need to migrate, to migrate with dignity, not as refugees. I have moved three times. Every three years I move. My first house is about 20 meters from here, 15 meters to 20 meters from where I'm standing. After another three years, I have to move away from here and build another home there. And that's your house just over the sea wall? Yeah, that's my last house. I'm not quite sure how long I'll be there. That depends on the, how strong my sea wall here will stand the uh, high tide waves. Nothing we can do about it. The younger people are beginning to understand, but the, the older ones, uh, it's very, very hard for them because it's very attached to the land, you know. Uh, if you have a land, you have to stay and die there. And it's, it's very hard to, to leave your islands. Uh. One time we went to the cemetery and there was a funeral took place. And this coffin was put into the ground, but somehow it's floating on this, in the on the in the, in there, you know, it's floating, and they have to put stone to to put it right down. And to us, you know, uh, it's very important for our ancestors where you bury your dead. I don't want to live here because I was born here, and my sisters live here as well. But if the facts, but if that facts affects me, then I will 
Tabby to leave here. Mm. I feel very sad and it's hurting to leave where you come from. The scientists have said that in 50 years, Kidipes will submerge underwater. That's not a happy thought. Carbon trading will be of no consequence to us. So there has got to be some very special provisions for the victims, not the potential victims, the victims, because we are victims. And so there's got, to, there's got to be some very deep soul searching on the part of people to do something about it. sovereign nation? Will we remain a people? Will, will we be able to maintain the identity and the culture that we have? And my answer is yes. I will do everything in my power to be able to do so. But at what cost? And who is going to pay for it?